You may have heard people talk about the polar vortex. This is the first time I've seen it described or kind of explained in a graphic. Kind of interesting. The polar vortex. Here in just a second after Blizzard Bill talks, you'll hear his buddy graphically show what the polar vortex is. And then here's our concern. If you're just tuning in and you look at this and go, okay, it looks like it's falling apart. It's not. Because in the upper atmosphere, there's a big column of wind that's wrapping around the storm, which is now moving into Canada. As you get some mixing, like making a cake, you put all the ingredients in the blender and boom, there it goes. That's what's going to happen, and it's going to mix. And already starting to do that, by the way, starting to mix those very strong winds down to the surface. And that means significant blowing and drifting. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a second. Polar vortex. Ross, what is it? That's where all the cold air is, Bill. It's normally close to the North Pole for this time of the year, really any time of the year. Let's take a look at those graphics. And you, again, you usually have all that trapped cold air closer to the North Pole. And every once in a while, when we get some of those cold Arctic outbreaks, it'll slide closer to the Hudson Bay. But this is very unusual. Coldest pocket air we've had in 20 years. And that pocket of air has now shifted from the North Pole all the way to the northern part of the Great Lakes. And that's allowing all that cold air to screen this direction. Likewise, though, areas that are typically very cold, close to the Arctic Circle, well, they're not as cold at this point. Uh, Fairbanks, Alaska tomorrow, 9 degrees. Below there you go. Zero. Meanwhile, for us, we'll be 